What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released iOS 16 beta 4 to register developers a little over two weeks after the re-release of developer beta 3 and the first public beta. And the next public beta will be out soon. I'll talk more about that near the end of this video. But in addition to this iOS release, Apple also dropped iPadOS 16 beta 4, watchOS 9 beta 4, macOS Ventura beta 4, tvOS 16 beta 4, and HomePodOS 16 beta 4. But as usual, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS in this video. And you guys can see here, the size of this fourth beta was around 1.67 gigabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max coming from beta 3. So still a pretty large update given that we're on a fourth beta so let's go and check out the build number for this new update so if you go into our settings general about ios 16 and you will see the first change here as well we now have the preview of the build number right here on the about screen you no longer need to tap into this to see the build number it is previewed for us right there so we can see the new build number is 20a 5328H. So we have an H at the end of the build number, which does indicate we still have a ways to go before the final release, of course. Now, if we go down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see that is now 2.08.01 for the iPhone 13 series. That might be different if you're on a different generation of iPhone. But that's not the main thing you guys are here for. So let's talk about the new features and changes found in iOS 16 beta 4 because there are quite a few. So first off, let's talk about the lock screen or the notification center and the now playing platter. So I'm going to have iOS 16 beta 3 on the left, beta 4 on the right throughout this video. So the first thing you'll notice is that everything is a little bit thicker on beta 4. So you can see right here, the playback buttons are a little bit thicker, especially the the numbers right here for the duration are a little bit bigger and also thicker and this right here as well the little bar is bigger and thicker than it was in beta 3 also when you tap on the album artwork it looks like it takes up more screen real estate on beta 4 than it did on beta 3 also the animation is not as choppy as it was in previous builds now if we go to create or edit a new lock screen that doesn't have any widgets added to it and we go to customize you will see that in that box now it says add widgets so before it could have been confusing because there was no text there people may not have known that you could add widgets but now apple makes that more clear this update also adds the live activities api for developers to inject into their applications so this was a big feature that apple talked about at the event where we're going to be able to see like live sports scores and Uber rides and things like that live on our lock screen. So the API has been added for developers to add into their applications, but it's still gonna be a while before we see that release to the public because Apple did say that we're not gonna see that with the initial release, the initial public release of iOS 16. Now, if we head into our settings and go to the wallpaper section and then go to customize our home screen right here, if we go to customize current wallpaper, you will notice at the bottom, we have quite a few changes. So before it was pretty confusing. I mean, there was just these different buttons down here and you kind of didn't know what they did until you tapped on them. But now in beta four, it makes it clear what each button does. So we have the original, we have color, which would change the color to, I guess, the strongest color in the background. We have a gradient where it would change to a gradient, or you have photos where if you tap on that, it will take you to your photos. And then the blur is over here on the right now. So you can see right there, it says blur. If you tap on that, it will blur the background image. So before in beta three, it was just kind of, you had to tap on this right here, legibility blur, and it didn't really appear as a button for a lot of people that didn't know how to do that. So everything is just much easier to navigate here when customizing your home screen wallpaper on beta four. And you'll also see that instead of just a photos icon, it now says photos right there. And when you tap on that, it will take you to this page. Whereas before it just took you to your library on beta three. And from here, you will see, we also have a bug in beta four where it shows add widgets up there in the top left for whatever reason. So I assume that will be fixed in the next beta. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention is that the earth lock screen right here, it seems to have more detail now than it did in beta three. So you guys can see the difference right here. It's a little bit darker. The clouds look a little bit more realistic and there are more clouds. So they're just constantly updating this wallpaper or this lock screen. If we head back into our settings and go to notifications, you will see a big difference up top here in beta four. So before we just had display as, and it gave us this little drop down right here where we select count, stack, or list. And for a lot of people, that was confusing. You didn't know what it did until you tapped on it and went back to your lock screen to see your notifications. But now in beta four, we can see there are images to tell us basically what 
these notification styles look like. So we have count right there, where of course it will show the count, the number of notifications at the bottom. Then we have stack and we have list. So really nice visuals there for the display as and notifications. And if we go back and into display and brightness, then go down to the bottom to display zoom, you will see that these have been changed. The names have been changed. So before it said zoomed and standard, now it's larger text and default, but they both appear to be the same, just the names have been changed. Now in the messages application, we have some pretty major changes here in beta four. So you will notice that now when you edit a message in iMessage, it now has a blue edited button. So before it was just gray that said edited, but now it's blue. And when you tap on that, you can see a log of what the message said before you edited it. So you can see that. And also the person you sent the message to can see that. So you can see here, here's an incoming message. I could tap on edited and it will show what it said before that. And you can see here, you can edit up to five times. So there's a log. You can see every time I changed this text, that is what it said before. Now, keep in mind, you can only edit messages up to 15 minutes after you send them. So I don't think this is a bad thing. Most people are only, you know, editing messages to change, you know, the grammar or change the spelling. They're not really doing it for anything bad because you can only do it after 15 minutes. So I don't think this is a bad change. A lot of people seem to think it is, but also new in this update is something I think is also a better change for iMessage. And that is that you now only have two minutes to unsend a message. So before it was 15 minutes, just like the time that you get to edit, but now you only have two minutes to unsend a message, which I think is another good change here in messages. If we head into the music application, we get a lot of changes that we saw on the now playing platter on the lock screen and the notification center. But you could see here in the actual now playing screen and the music application, you will also see that the bar right here that indicates the duration, it kind of pops out more than it did on previous versions. It popped out a little bit, but now it pops out and really gets bright white like that. And as an even bigger change for the volume. So if you tap on the volume way over here, you can see the volume bar gets bigger and it's easier to control the volume than it was on previous versions. Also, everything appears to be a little bit thicker here. The bars appear a little bit bigger and a little bit thicker along with the indicators over here. The music indicators seem a little bit bigger. And then heading into our accessibility settings, we have a new option down here for control nearby devices. And if you tap on that, it says control nearby devices allows control of nearby devices from this iPhone. And if you tap on that, you can see these are the devices that I can currently control. So I can control this iPad right here if I tap on that. And this is similar to what we could do with the Apple Watch, but now it's for iPhones as well. So you can see I get these different options here to pull down the control center. You guys can't see it, but it did pull down the control center on my iPad and I can do other little changes here and kind of control it. This is the home screen to go to the home screen. I can do this to open up the app switcher right there. Pretty cool. You can now do that from your iPhone and it's not just limited to the Apple watch In the home application. We now have two new wallpapers. So you can see right here, the second and the third wallpaper are both new and beta four before we only had this one right here before it turned to gradients. So two new wallpapers. If you are a fan of changing that wallpaper and the home application in the health application. If we go to the medications section, we have quite a few changes to the UI when we add a medication. So first off, you can see right there, it says you can search for a medication or use your camera. It didn't say that before. And if we search for something, the search results have changed a little bit. So it says possible matches, whereas before it just said top matches and also the look of these cards is a little bit different. So I'll just go to this one right here, choose medication type. You can see the change or the order has changed a little bit for the tablet oral or capsule. And we also have show more now where you can see you could change to a, you know, one of these different types of medications. So we're just going to select tablet for both go to next. And you can see it says choose medication strength. And down here it says you can add a custom medication of strength is not available. So we didn't have that option before. We'll just go to 30 milligrams. Let's go to next. And then after we add that medication, if we go down a little bit, you could see that before the about medications image looked like this. Now it looks like this in beta four. And if you go into options right here, we have a new toggle for detect time zone change. Now, if we head back into our settings and go to focus and then go into one of our focus modes. So we'll go into this one right here and then go down 
down to where it says turn on automatically before it said add automation right there but now it says add schedule so just a minor verbiage change right there when you tap on it the same thing happens and then also if you wanted to choose a custom home screen if you tap on choose right here you could see it said choose a home page to turn on now it says choose a home screen page so and also below that says choose from your pages whereas before it said choose from existing pages so just minor verbiage changes there and the focus settings we also got a pair of new splash screens in beta 4 so this is the new one for notes it just tells us about quick note about more powerful smart folders and remember one less password where you have end-to-end -end encryption for your lock notes with your devices passcode and then also we have one for the app store right here nothing major it just says a safe and trusted place to discover and download amazing apps and games and then if we go into the TV application and go to our profile in the top right and at the bottom we have a new toggle for sync my sports and then moving on to the release notes beta 4 includes the most bug fixes we've seen yet for iOS 16 and it's not even close there are a ton of bug fixes in this update a ton of resolved issues and just overall bug fixes so you can see we have several home screen bugs that have been resolved a ton of fixes for the mail and the maps application we also have a fix for wireless carplay it could fail to connect that has been fixed i know a lot of people talked about carplay having issues before there's also a fix for when you delete your clock it inadvertently deletes the sleep alarm that has been fixed also apple mentions users can experience slow animations when using zoom after leaving the magnifier application there's a fix for airplay so if you had issues with airplay where it would not initiate from the photos application i had that before that has been fixed in beta 4. we also have an issue with the icloud backup where you cannot restore that has been fixed as well in beta 4. a lot of people lost data from that bug so thankfully that has been fixed and you can see there are just a ton of resolved issues here in beta 4. so i think this may go down as the first quote unquote stable build of the ios 16 beta cycle and as far as bugs go none of the bugs i had in beta 3 i've been able to reproduce in beta 4. so it seems like all of the bugs that i talked about in my previous video have been fixed in beta 4 which is pretty impressive now of course i am going to be using this on my main device for you know the next week or so so if there are any bugs that come about i will let you know in my apple weekly episode on the weekends but so far i mean everything seems good in terms of bugs there are just a lot of bug fixes and doesn't seem to be too many bugs happening right now now as far as performance goes performance feels a little bit better so far on beta 4. i am running a quick geekbench test just to see how those scores compare to beta 3 and the public beta but so far performance feels excellent on beta 4. it was really never bad on beta 3. i just had a lot of crashes and things like that and it seems like beta 4 is going to fix a lot of those crashing issues so let's see what we score here so we got a 1742 on the single core and a 4722 on the multi-core if we check out how that compares to beta 3 right here you could see slightly higher on the single core and slightly lower on the multi-core so of course these scores aren't really indicative of the overall performance, but it is good to see at least the single core is a little bit higher than beta three. But as far as overall performance goes, I'll have to let you guys know in a little while after using it on my main device. And when it comes to battery life, battery life so far honestly feels better than it did in beta three. I've been using this for a while. I've been recording this video for 35 minutes now, and I still have 100% battery. That tells me that battery life is going to be better on beta four. Now, don't take that and run with it. I will let you guys know in my Apple Weekly episode on a Saturday if battery life has indeed improved. But so far, it definitely feels like beta four should have better battery life than any previous iOS 16 beta build. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So starting with iOS 16 public beta two. So if you are on the public beta, you guys should be seeing your next update as early as tomorrow the 28th so that is a Thursday now keep in mind last year with iOS 15 Apple released the second public beta on a Friday so I would not rule out Friday the 29th either so you guys should see that second public beta sometime tomorrow or the following day it could come early next week but I think it's going to come later this week either tomorrow or the 29th now as far as beta 5 goes developer beta 5 we are on a two-week cycle right now so we should see iOS 16 beta 5 on the week of August 8th so we should see it most likely on a Tuesday or a Wednesday those are usually the hot days 
for betas. And then after beta 5 comes, we could very well be switching over to a weekly release schedule leading up to iOS 16's final official release here in mid to late September. And then as far as an iOS 15.7 beta 1, that could come as early as tomorrow or early next week as well. Now, of course, we don't know for sure that a 15.7 is coming, but it is kind of implied since we're not going to have, you know, iOS 16 until the end of September. That gives us, you know, a full month in August to have beta testing for a release in early to mid September. So I would expect a 15.7 at some point, and it probably will have betas. So we could see that very soon as well. Also, don't be surprised if we see a 15.6.1 in the meantime. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 16 beta 4. A lot of nice new features and changes along with a ton of bug fixes and it appears to be better battery life as well. I'm still sitting at 100% after 40 plus minutes of shooting this video without charging it and you know running through all the features. That's impressive. So I think battery life is going to be better once again here. But if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 16 coverage coming in the very near future. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.